Hello guys, welcome back to Dream Simplified to Essentials of Physiology textbook. And today we continue with chapter 10. It's 10 erythropoiesis. As you all know, erythropoiesis has to do with the production of the red blood cells. The red blood cells are so called erythrocytes. So when you are producing erythrocytes, that process in which you produce it is called what? Erythropoiesis. But for study purposes, it's not just the production, but it comes from the origin down to the development down to the what maturation of the erythrocytes not just the production of the red blood cells you also look into how they come how they come into the picture how they develop and how they get what mature all of them are under the production of the red blood cells there are certain sites which you must know in fetal life you have the mesoblastic stage and this process occurs in the mesenchyme of the yolk sac when the placenta is not yet developed and other structures the yolk sac helps in production of the red blood cells serves as a site for production of the red blood cells then the hepatic stage whereby the red blood cells are produced in the lymph nodes the spleens and also the liver the myelot stage is when the red blood cell is actually produced in the bone marrow including the liver in newborn babies not really important since it's review the process of erythropoiesis you have to know the stem cells the stem cells are the primary cells that are capable of self renewal and differentiating into specialized what cells. So these stem cells they are just cells that can divide. They have the ability to divide. You turn them what stem cells. And the one that is of our interest is what the hemopoietic stem cells. The hemopoietic stem cells are present in the bone marrow and they are called the uncommitted pluripotent hemopoietic what stem cells or you call them hemocytoblasts. These cells are uncommitted at this point in time, meaning that they can give rise to various blood cells, not just a specific type of blood cells. Another important thing you need to know is that we also have the committed pluripotent hemopoietic stem cells that are committed to producing a specific type or class of the blood cells. And these include the lymphoid stem cells that give rise to your lymphocytes and natural killer cells. The natural killer cells help to function as antigen presenting cells. They also have the colony forming what blastocytes. All these ones include the colony forming units erythrocytes, which is CFUE, the colony forming units granulocytes or monocytes, which is CFUGM, then the colony forming units megakaryocytes. All these ones give rise to the platelets. What are the various changes during the process of erythropoiesis? You have the reduction in size. You don't need to memorize the values, just so that as you proceed, there is a gradual reduction in size of these RBCs. Then there is the disappearance of the nuclei and nucleus. The nuclei and nucleus they begin to disappear because, as you all know, the mature red blood cells don't have a nucleus, just like we did in the last review session. Then there is appearance of hemoglobin, which fully occurs as the intermediate was normal blood stage. Then there is change in the staining properties of the cytoplasm. From blue, you get red, various changes. Then what are the stages of erythropoiesis? You have six stages. You have the pro erythroblast the early normal blast, the intermediate normal blast, the late normal blast, the reticulocytes, and the mature erythrocytes. Just take notes. As we are moving down these stages, the diameters and other parameters, they tend to what, decrease, including the size. What is the peculiar characteristic during the pro erythroblasts? It's also called megaloblast. It's the first cell derived from the colony forming unit erythrocytes. It's very large. At that point, it has not what, reduced in size. The nucleus is large and occupies the what, cell almost what, completely. Not a typical feature. Then, it has a reticular network. It doesn't contain hemoglobin. The cell is still basophilic in nature. The early normal blast is also termed the basophilic what, erythroblast. At this stage, the early normal blast becomes what, smaller and the diameter also decreases. There is condensation of chromatin network. The intermediate normal blast is where you see that the chromosome is what the hemoglobin is fully developed, that it starts what developing. Why at the late normal blast, the diameter also decreases further from about 8 to 10. Like I said, you don't need to memorize these values. You just have to know that there is a decrease in diameter, even in size. Then at this late normal blast, too, the quantity of hemoglobin increases. Then we have the reticulocyte stage. This one stage is also known as immature red blood cells. It's slightly larger than the mature red blood cell, but it's more similar to the mature red blood cell than the other stages that will pass through in this process of erythropoiesis. The cytoplasm contains reticular network of reticuline. Reticuline is what a typical feature that distinguishes what reticulocytes from the other stages. Then when you come to the mature erythrocytes, that reticuline will now leave. You no longer have the reticuline. Then another thing is that the cell also decreases in size too. 
with a normal diameter of 7.2 microns. The mature red blood cell is with hemoglobin, but no nucleus. Like I said, nucleus will not exist. And then it attains a biconcave shape. And in the last review session, I told you guys the importance of that biconcave shape. Here is a table indicating the peculiar changes in the various what steps of erythropoiesis. The last thing, and I think it's the last, is the factors necessary for erythropoiesis. We divide them into general factors, the maturation factors, the factors necessary for hemoglobin formation. Those general factors have to do with the first one, erythropoietin, the tyroxine, the hemopoietic growth factors, and the vitamins. What you need to know is that erythropoietin is produced in the kidney. So when you have erythropoietin, Usually, time is the most important general factor for erythropoiesis. When you have erythropoietin, it will tend to stimulate this process of erythropoiesis. Then the tyroxine is for metabolic activities. And as we all know, the production of red blood cells is also in metabolic activities. So when you have tyroxine available, it tends to increase the production. Then the hemopoietic growth factors. There are various hemopoietic growth factors, like all these uh, interleukins, like gly glycoproteins, interleukin-3, interleukin-6, interleukin-1. 11. Interleukin 11 is secreted by the osteoblasts. Then what else do we have? We have the vitamins, like vitamin B, vitamin C, vitamin D, and vitamin E. The maturation factors include vitamin B12, which is also called cyanocobalamin. This vitamin B12 is an extrinsic factor. The absorption of this vitamin B12 involves the intrinsic factor of castle, which is produced in what's this intrinsic factor of castle is produced in the stomach. It helps in what absorption of this extrinsic factor, also called vitamin B12. Then we also have the intrinsic factor of castle. Those are all maturation factors. Folic acid too is also essential. So when there is deficiency of what the folic acid, the anemia formed is then megaloblastic anemia. So that's all about the review series of the important area under chapter 10, the essentials of medical physiology textbook. Thank you very much, guys, for listening.